Assalamu alaikum. I'm greetings to you all. This is Sabina Victor, the presenter for today's first bite size session. And uh, let me start with the presentation. All right. So, the first topic for Imparts uh, bite size session is project-based learning ideas. And in today's presentation, I'm going to familiarize you all with uh, with certain uh, activities which you can conduct, whether you are an elementary school teacher right up to the university level. So stay uh, focused and please watch this presentation. Now, who am I? I am an educationist with 22 years of experience in the education field. My forte is English language and literature. Uh, I am a winner twice. In fact, I would rather say it this way. Twice I have won uh, international awards. The first one was the International Excellence Award by Global Education Network. Uh, this took place in March uh, 2024. And just recently, I received the Teacher Gratitude Award by International Internship University India on 5th of September 2024. I'm the founder and CEO of Impart Learning to Excel and Grow. At the same time, I'm not just an educationist, but a certified teacher trainer, yes. And uh, I have done, uh, I'm a global, cert, a global trainer by International Internship University India. Additionally, I am a UNESCO MGIEP certified facilitator for social and emotional learning. Uh, and also I'm a Teach and Seek certified digital trainer. I train teachers for a variety of topics other than English, uh, depending upon the level. So if your educational institution is interested, please do get in touch with me. And uh, one thing else that I would like to share about myself is I am representing Pakistan at uh, various educational international platforms such as Global Forum for Teacher Educators, Global Education Network. I am an Open Pakistan alumina for Relo Pakistan, which is a public affairs section of US Embassy Islamabad. So now I move to my icebreaker activity. I have brought for you all an interesting activity. And this the name of this activity is Describe and Draw. Do not get deceived by the picture. You're not going to draw an ice cream cone, no. So before I, uh, before you participate in this particular activity, there are a few instructions which I want you to follow and the first instruction is you have to be a very active listener. You have to listen to my instructions and then draw. Make sure that you use sharpened pencil. And uh, you are most welcome to share your drawing, your drawings in the WhatsApp group uh, with your name written right at the top. Okay. So let's move now to the activity. So are you ready? I'm sure you are. Okay, so now here are my instructions. Number one, the first instruction is draw a medium sized circle in the middle of the paper. Number two, draw a medium sized square below the circle, but the top of it should touch the bottom of the circle. Number three, draw a medium sized heart in the center of the square. Number four, draw two small rectangles, one on each side of the square. The rectangle should line up with the top of the square. All right, next is 
draw a medium sized triangle above the circle. The bottom of the triangle should touch the top of the circle. Instruction number six. Draw three small stars anywhere inside the triangle. Number seven. Draw a small triangle in the center of the medium sized circle. Instruction number eight. Draw an arc which curves up below the small triangle. And the last instruction is, draw two small circles above the small triangle, one on the right and the other on the left. If you want uh, to listen to these instructions, you are most welcome to, you know, uh, rewind the video clip and you can listen to the instructions. Okay? So I hope you are finished with your drawings and you must be eagerly waiting for what the drawing would be. Okay? So this is the expected drawing and if you drew the exact picture as per instruction, that means you are an active listener and you take keen interest in doing activities, okay? So uh, I hope you're able to hear this clap. So a clap for all of you. You have done an amazing job, but let me share with you the drawings which I have received from some participants, okay? So you will just get a glimpse of those drawings. Now this, now, this particular slide has the drawings by Adil Ansari's family, Dr. Adil Ansari's family. His wife and himself, you can see they have shared their individual drawings. And, you know, I greatly appreciate the fact that their daughter is now the youngest participant of the Describe and Draw activity. So she also participated in, in the drawing. So, uh, you know, uh, this particular family has made uh, the describe and draw activity a family oriented activity, which I greatly appreciate. So thank you so much, Dr. Adil Ansari. We have also received uh, entries, uh, the drawings from uh, other teachers that is Ms. Atufa Murtaza, Ms. Rosina Bakshali, Ms. Saida Tayyiba Batur Rizvi, and Ms. Varda Aslam. So you all have done an amazing job and thank you for sharing your drawings in the WhatsApp group. And uh, you know, your prompt uh, sharing enabled me now to make it a part of my presentation and everyone, whether in Pakistan or around the world will watch this uh, presentation and they will see your 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 enthusiasm you know to participate in in activities so thank you and thank you for being active participants okay so moving on so now i come to is the definition of project based learning now in simplest words Project-based learning is a teaching method in which students learn by actively engaging in the real world and personally through meaningful projects. The educational value of PBL is that it aims to build students' creative capacity to work through difficult or ill-structured problems, especially in small teams. Now, PBL represents, uh, it presents opportunities for deeper learning, development of important skills linked to college, university, and careers. Now, encourage your students to identify through a research on a real-world problem for which they have to develop a solution using evidence to support their claim. They have to present their project through a multimedia approach using a set of 21st century tools. All right. So now I come to is the characteristics of uh, PBL. And you can see I have 
highlighted three uh, subtopics under the characteristics. First one is interdisciplinary. Now, project-based curriculum is designed to engage students using real-world interdisciplinary approach because real-world challenges are rarely solved using information and skills. Projects require students to engage in inquiry, solution building, and product construction to help address the issue or challenge presented. And as students do the work, they often use content, knowledge, and skills to successfully complete the project. Number two is rigorous. Now, project-based education requires the application of knowledge and skills, not just recall and, and recognition. PBL assesses how students apply a variety of academic content in new contexts. As students engage in a project, they begin by asking a question. Uh, inquiry leads students to think critically as they are using their academic knowledge in real world application. The inquiry process leads to the development of solutions to address the identified problems. Next I come to is the student centered. Now in PBL, the role of the teacher shifts from content delivery to a facilitator. Students work more independently through the PBL process with the teacher providing support only when needed. Students are encouraged to make their own decisions about how to do their work and demonstrate their understanding. The PBL fosters students' independence, uh, then is ownership of his or her work and development of 21st century skills. Now I move to is why teachers should, you know, um, use PBL. Now there are 10 reasons why teachers should use it in the classrooms. First of all, it provides opportunities to use technology. Number two, it promotes lifelong learning. Number three, it connects students and the educational institution with the real world. Number four is to uh, PBL encourages teachers to assess uh, students through a variety of assessments, especially formative and authentic assessments. Number five, students demonstrate their abilities by working independently. Number six, students develop the ability to work with others learn skills such as teamwork, active listening, cooperation, time management, etc. Number seven, it helps teachers to communicate in meaningful ways with the student or the team. Give, uh, giving meaningful feedback is important. Number eight, it encourages students to be more engaged and to learn actively. Then number nine, PBL builds skills for further education and career. And last is it brings out students' creativity and uh, enhances critical thinking skills. And I'm giving more examples of PBL. One is plant and manage a garden to feed a group of homeless. Number two is redesign public transport in your city. Next, I move to is, now, uh, this is something very important. You need to understand that there are some differences between project-based learning and problem-based learning. Now, the key difference is this, that Problem-based learning focuses on one or two standards and each problem can be sorted out in a short period of time. It can be one, two, two, or two, four days. In problem-based, students are mainly, you know, they explore the problem, they discuss the mathematical ideas, and uh, they emphasize on, uh, you know, solving the problem through a certain process. All right. And it can also be a productive struggle, whereas PBL lays greater emphasis 
on using content skills to complete a project and the project uh, it takes a longer time as compared to problem base where problem base uh, can be done in uh, can be done maybe in a day or maybe in four days or a week but project base can take a week it can take a month or months it can also take a semester as well okay and students are supposed to uh, find a solution okay uh, that uh, that answers the challenge or the question which is given to them by the teacher okay so moving on now i come to is another example of uh, project based learning and uh, this can be for a k12 classroom activity and the project mainly focuses on pollution and its types now you can ask your students to create a presentation about their findings but before the findings they need to research about you know pollution what are the causes of pollution and what are what is the impact of each type of pollution and then design an action plan to reduce that pollution in their community when you give such a project to your students they learn a variety of things such as research skills and in research skills they learn about locating evaluating reliable resources you tell your students which are the reliable students uh, uh, sources obviously if it is a school level you are supposed to guide your students uh, about those reliable sources like uh, for school level i would encourage you teachers to use kiddle uh, which is a very prominent um, search engine for for school students then they also learn about information literacy such as understanding how to organize and present data they learn about environmental science concepts such as sources and impacts of pollution they also learn about problem solving critical thinking skills when they are working in their teams or with their members when they are designing an action plan and they last but not the least they learn even communication and collaboration skills when presenting their findings and working together on a project now you can create a lesson plan for uh, for this particular activity that is taking action against environmental pollution you can see i have shared three objectives that is students will research on the types of pollution their effects on the environment plus they will understand the importance of taking the action to reduce pollution in their community and last uh, objective is they will design an action plan for reducing the pollution in their community and you can see that there are materials uh, which i have mentioned clearly that is internet access make sure that there is a non disruptive internet connection and a reliable internet connection given to the students that is the responsibility of the school management then make sure that you they have uh, proper research materials you take them to the library or you provide them with the research materials or you tell them to research one day before the project and for that they can use books articles then is presentation software you can uh, give them the tools such as uh, powerpoint presentation google slides then is uh, nowadays canva is also very popular for creating presentations you can also have a poster board and other materials for creating an action plan now the procedure is definitely the teacher needs to discuss the topic on pollution you can have a brainstorming you can discuss about the causes of pollution the types of pollution the impact it has on the environment and on human beings uh you can also ask your students to brainstorm the types of pollution then you uh, divide your students into small groups that is the second uh, part which is the research and you give them the sub topics to work on do not overburden your students with a lot of topics because you see that will take a lot of time and it will also cause a lot of confusion 
So make sure that the topics which you give to your students are divided equally. Provide each group with internet access and research material and give your students time to conduct the research. It can take even one day, two days or three days as well. Okay, then uh, presentation. In the presentation, your students, you have to make it clear to them that they have to present the work. And for that, they will have to work in their teams using the visual aids in their presentation. And give your students the time also to work on the presentation slides, okay? And uh, then after the presentation, ask your students to develop an action plan. Tell them what is an action plan. Action plan means putting the idea now into execution. Okay, how they would implement those ideas in the community and encourage them to think creatively on how to reduce pollution. Allow, give, you are supposed to give them the time to research and gather additional information if they need it for their action plan. All right, then the procedure. Implementation and reflection, which means that now the time has come for the students to execute their presentation, to share the ideas with other members in the class. Ask them to explain the action and how they are going to implement it. And also, in the reflection, ask your students how did they feel throughout the project? And uh, what challenges did they face? What difficulties they faced? when they were working with the team, when they were working on the research, putting the content together in the presentation and working on the action plan. And then there is the next step that is assessment. You can assess your students uh, through other ways such as self-reflection or peer evaluation on the presentation and action plans. Then you as a facilitator, you can observe your students while they are working in their teams and you can record your observation through or using a rubric. I have done this when I worked for the Aga Khan Middle School uh, project. I was given a rubric to work on while the students were working in their teams. So I had to be a keen observer and make sure that the observations where I put in the categories and the rubrics matched with what they were doing. So you also have to be very vigilant then is the formal assessments. You can assess your students through quizzes on pollution, what they learned about pollution and the effects that it had on the environment. So now I come to is a variety of PBL ideas, starting with the elementary level. Now at the elementary level, you can have a community garden project. And the objective is the students will design and create a school garden. And the skills that they would learn are, would be related to subjects such as science, math, environmental studies, and art. And the outcome would be, of, uh, they, would fun uh, they would create a functioning garden with student-centered instructional guides. Then is a classroom cookbook. Objective is that students will compile and publish a cookbook with family recipes, the recipes which are cooked in their homes. And the skills would be related to writing, math skills, cultural studies. Cultural studies means your traditional dishes which are cooked in their homes. Outcome would be maybe um, if, you, uh, if the school allows or if your educational institution allows, you can have printed or designed digital cookbooks, okay? Next is you can have simple, uh, simple machine fair where students can uh, create exhibits on simple machines and the skills were, would be related to science, engineering and presentation skills. Certainly the teacher, the science uh, teacher would have to work with them and the outcome or the result would be that the it would be an exhibition where the students demonstrate their machines, okay, the simple machines. Next I come to is the middle school. Now in the middle school, you can have a historical reenactment. And the purpose would be that the students research and reenact on a historical event. Maybe it could be related to a pre-partition event, pre-partition of Pakistan, right? 
So, and the skills would be related to history, drama, research, and writing. So the students would be working on these tasks using these skills. And the outcome would be, after the students have worked on their research, you will have a sort of a skit where students will present uh, their uh, research through a skit or a drama, a live drama, all right? And the audience would definitely, you can uh, invite their parents or you can invite their uh, other students along with the upper management to watch the work. Then you can also ask your students to design a sustainable city. And the objective would be students would plan a sustainable city model. And the skills would be related to geography, science, technology, and art. And the outcome would be your students will create a, a model and a presentation using sustainability ideas and practices. They can also have another project related to STEM. And the objective would be that the students would you will solve real world problems using STEM principles. And the skills, certainly they are related to science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, they would use uh, prototypes and presentations for uh, innovations. Now, prototypes are basically, uh, you know, a first preliminary version of a device or a vehicle from which other forms are developed. So next I come to is uh, the PBL ideas for high school. Now in high school, you can have social justice documentary with the objective the students create a documentary on social justice issues. Skills would be related to social studies, film production, writing, interviewing, um, and outcome would be a documentary film would be premiered to the school or the community. Then they have an entrepreneurship project where students will develop and pitch a business plan. And the skills would be related to economics, marketing, public speaking, and writing. Obviously, when they are going to pitch in business ideas, they will have to use convincing words, you know, to, uh, to make people to agree with their ideas. And the outcome would be a detailed business plan or a pitch presentation. Okay, then you can also have an environmental action plan, which I discussed earlier with you. I also showed you a lesson plan. And um, moving on now, I come to his PBL uh, ideas for college and university. Now for college and university, certainly the topics would be more, com uh, would be according to their level such as urban planning and sustainable development project. Now the object were, objective would be the students create an urban development plan that addresses environmental sust uh, sustainability infrastructure and housing, like a city of Prachi, where urbanization is a problem. So you can encourage your college and university students to come up with ideas of how we can work within the parameters that are given to us, where we can use sustainability ideas for a city like Karachi. And the skills would be related to urban planning, environmental science, economics, policy analysis, and the outcome would be a comprehensive report or a visual model, physical or digital, of a proposed urban development plan presented to a panel uh, or a local government officials. And the real world application is solutions can address real urban uh, developmental issues in local or global context. If you're talking about local context, like in Prachi, we are facing infrastructure problems. Then is, there's a lot of traffic problems and there is no greenery, right? Prachi needs greenery. We need to practice horticulture. So that can be a part of the urban planning or development project. Next I come to is the startup incubator project. And the objective would be students develop a startup business idea, including marketing research, business plan, a pitch to potential investors. And the skills would be related to entrepreneurship, economic, marketing, public speaking, finance. Outcome would be a detailed business plan or a professional pitch presentation to a panel of entrepreneurs or investors. You must have heard of Shark Tank. If you have this project, you can take up successful or meaningful 
projects to a program that is Shark Tank, which is being introduced now in Pakistan. And it will have real world applications where students might have the opportunity to secure funding or mentorship for actual business adventure for ventures like Shark Tank. They do this, okay? Then is community-based participatory research at a CBPR. And the objective would be where students are encouraged to do community work on social issues, example, home, homelessness, healthcare access, and co-develop a project that addresses this. And skills would be related to so, uh, social research, ethics, project management, communication. Outcome would definitely be a report or a proposal co-created with the community presenting actionable steps to address identified issues. Maybe they can work with home for aged or maybe with orphanages, right? Or uh, maybe also with uh, uh, a very popular uh, NGO uh, run by Sabina Khatri in Liari. So they can even work with them. I'm just giving you uh, ideas or examples. Definitely, there are a variety of communities who are already working on uh, community-based uh, 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 participatory uh, ideas. All right. So the real-world application would be students gain hands-on experience in real-world problem-solving community engagement. Then we come to as a digital marketing strategy for a nonprofit where students will work with local nonprofit to develop digital marketing campaign aimed at raising awareness, funding, or engagement. And digital uh, the skills were they would use their digital marketing skills, graphic designing, data analysis, social media management. And the outcome would be a comprehensive marketing strategy, including social media campaigns, content calendars, performance metrics presented to nonprofit leadership and the real world applica application would be this project can be used as internships or long term partnership with students and nonprofit organizations last is you can even <clears throat> second last idea is you can ask your students to develop a software development or an app design objective would be computer science or engineering students can design functional software solution or mobile apps addressing a specific real world problem like hacking or scams and skills would be related to programming design uh, thinking project management user experience and the outcome would be a software prototype app presented to a client or relevant stakeholder along with te technical documentation and user manual and it takes time to use um, uh, to create a manual. And real world application is students gain experience in product development with poss possibility of launching their app in the market, which is a very good idea. And last is the health sciences capstone project. And the purpose is related to medical field where students, the objective is medical nursing or public health students design and implement a health intervention program designing a public health issues such as diabetes management, mental health awareness, and skills would be linked to health research, data collection, program development, patient care. An outcome would be a pilot health program. Now, pilot, when we talk about pilot projects, you need to understand that the term pilot project means a smaller scale trial that tests tools, products or services and innovations. An example uh, is also like tech companies may pilot new software releases or private companies may pilot the release of a new product before to a wider launch. So the... Uh, <clears throat> The whole purpose would be to see whether the services or the project, uh, the, the, the trial could be used in the real world applica application in terms of health program management, patient care, valuable for future careers in healthcare. Now I come to is the conclusion. Now you see project base is a very powerful tool for engaging students from elementary to university. It fosters a variety of skills that are important for the success in real world. And the my final thought is, always remember the best learning takes place when students are inspired and encouraged to take ownership of their learning or education. 
by working on meaningful projects. So this brings my entire presentation to an end. I hope you found it meaningful, helpful, useful, and I wish you all the best for your future endeavors and try to use the project-based ideas according to your respective domains or levels, okay? So take good care of yourselves and uh, goodbye from my side. Allah Hafiz.